All right, what's good, YouTube? It's Shin, and today I'm coming to you from the California Hotel here in downtown Las Vegas, where I'm going to the Market Street Cafe for the first time. Super excited to check this out. Let's head on inside. All right, everyone, here we are seated at the Market Street Cafe at the California Hotel. I am loving the vibe. You know I'm a really easygoing guy, so an inviting spot like this is definitely my kind of place. Classic diner feel with very warm tones and a very lively atmosphere. It's very popular here. Now there is a ton of island influence here at the Market Street Cafe, and I'm excited to find out what they've got to eat. Let's take a look at what they've got on the menu. So here is your menu here at the Market Street Cafe. Looks like breakfast is served from 6 a.m. to 11 and 30 a.m. Here are your specialties, Begg's Benedict, biscuits and gravy and the like, steak and eggs, country fried steak, omelets as well. Yeah, this is all looking really good. Here are your California breakfasts, served again from 6 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., things like chicken and waffles, old-fashioned hotcakes. Here are all of your breakfast sides, corned beef hash on the side, grilled ham steak, sausage patties and the like there, and beverages as well. They serve Pepsi here. Very nice. Now here is the all-day menu. It's currently about 8 p.m., so this is probably what we're ordering from today. All-day breakfasts are available. Loco Moco and Philippine favorite. That looks good. Here are your appetizers. Asian pot stickers, Korean short ribs. So yeah, you can see a lot of island influence here. Here are your soups, salads, and sandwiches. Um, yeah, looking really good. Zippies is a chain that exists out in uh, Hawaii. I believe they're coming to Vegas pretty soon here. Yeah, this all looks really good. And then here are your sides as well. Spam, uh, steamed rice, french fries, all that good looking stuff there. Continuing on, here are your Market Street dinners. Fettuccine Alfredo, ribeye steak, fried shrimp. Yeah, that all looks really good. And then your island favorites down here. Lots of dishes from the Hawaii Islands. Garlic shrimp, saimin, that's kind of like a ramen. Uh, yeah, this is all looking really, really good. And then here are your dinner specials at the Market Street Cafe. They say they have the juiciest prime rib in town, so I'm definitely looking forward to trying that. Short ribs and butterfish. Am I gonna get all of the specials today? I might get all of the specials today. And then here is that world famous oxtail soup. This is what everyone talks about when they're talking about the Market Street Cafe here at the California. So I think by the time I'm getting through a handful of those, uh, of those dishes, it should be nine o'clock so we can get in on that today. Here are your desserts and the remainder of the beverages. All very, very nice looking. And then your daily specials here. Uh, Monday, Korean chicken, Tuesday, Kalua pork, Wednesday, island combination, Thursday, chicken katsu, Friday, oxtail stew. Oh man, did I mess up by not coming home here on a Friday? That sounds amazing. Uh, teriyaki steak on Saturdays and fried pork chops on Sundays. And that's the menu. Okay, I'm definitely excited about the menu here today. So many island classics that I'm really looking forward to trying. I'm going to be definitely getting a good mix though because you know how it goes in my videos. Every restaurant is a buffet if you're willing to pay. So I'm going to get my order in and I'll catch you in a little bit when my appetizers arrive. All right, everyone, and our appetizers are here, and this is looking so good. Let me go in and give you a view. We got an order of the Korean short ribs, as well as the fried wontons, and some barbecue chicken wings. The smell coming off of these appetizers is insane. I cannot wait to give these a try. Let's go in. All right, first up, the Korean short ribs. Now, being Korean, I already feel at home here, and the smell from these ribs has got me salivating already. Hopefully, this is good. Oh yeah, that's delicious. The meat is very tender and very moist. No dry beef here. The soy marinade has been really absorbed by the meat, delivering such a delicious flavor. A ton of umami here, and a perfect amount of sugar rounding out a little bit of sweetness. The sesame seeds provide a nice earthy nuttiness, and there's also a really great char flavor here as well. It might be a tad salty, but doesn't detract from the overall flavor too much. I'm a big fan of these Korean short ribs. They're very good. Now the short ribs are served alongside with some mac salad. This is looking ultra creamy. Let's give it a taste. Mm. 
okay, you know what, not bad. Decent chew on the macaroni, they've been cooked well. It's a very creamy dressing. I think if you use a little bit of sugar, just increase the sweetness just a little bit. You know, but overall not bad. That's fine, Max salad. All right, next up, the fried wontons. Now, I will tell you, just by picking these up, these are kind of greasy. Let's dip it into the accompanying sweet and sour sauce here. And let's give it a try. You know, those are fine. Nice fry job on those wontons. They do have a very crispy exterior. That said, as mentioned before, it is a tad greasy. The flavor of the filling inside is fine. Nice amounts of pork in this. You definitely get that beef pork flavor. It's not bad. I just wouldn't say it's impressive. I could probably skip on these next time. Alrighty, and the last appetizer to try today is the barbecue chicken wing. This wing is absolutely smothered in this sauce. And there's a nice smoky aroma coming off of this. Let's give it a try. Yeah, you know what, not bad at all. Juicy chicken wings here, they're not dry by any means. And they got a good fry job, nice texture on the outside. The barbecue sauce is pretty run of the mill, relatively good smoky flavor, although I could use a little bit of additional tang, I think. But the sauce does have an overall good sweetness level as well. You know, I have no serious complaints, these are fine. All right, everyone, not a bad round of appetizers here. Those Korean short ribs are amazing. And everything else is fine as well. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a couple more bites of this and pack it up to go because we've got our first round of entrees coming. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, and our first round of entrees are here. This is looking pretty good. Let me go in and give you a view. I got the cow cheeseburger along with their garlic shrimp. I got some fettuccine alfredo with chicken as well as their saimin. This is all smelling so good. Can't wait to give it a try. Alrighty, first up, the cow cheeseburger. I'm always a fan of having cheeseburgers whenever I come to a diner like this. Let's see how the burger at the cow stacks out. You know, I'd say that's just okay. Now, as for the burger medium, but it does look a little closer to medium well. A lot of the moisture has been actually cooked out of it. I think it could also use a little bit of additional seasoning. Some additional salt and pepper would really help that burger meat. There's no sauce in this burger, so it is a tad dry. Though the cheese does provide a little bit of richness and saltiness there. It's not the worst burger I've ever had, but I'd probably skip it at the count. And let's try the accompanying french fries. Nice thin cuts here. Let's see how these stack up. Yeah, you know, not bad. Definitely some crispy french fries here. Nice dry job. They've been reasonably salted. I wouldn't say anything super special, but very run-of-the-mill french fries here, no complaints. Alrighty, next up, we're gonna try the garlic shrimp. Now, this is a beloved classic Hawaiian dish, and you would not believe the garlic smell that's coming off of this. I'm definitely excited. Mm. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. The shrimp are very lightly fried, providing a very nice crispy texture. The garlic sauce here is so incredibly robust. The garlic flavor is really in your face. Very pungent and very strong. It's almost to the point where there's a slight heat at the very end of it. It's very nice. This is a relatively straightforward and simple flavor, but it's very delicious. All right, next up, we're trying the Simon. It smells very nice here at the Market Street Cafe. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's nice. Nice cook on the noodles. They've got a firm chew and they've been able to soak up a lot of this broth flavor. The broth is nice and light, reflecting the fact that it is a fish base as opposed to a pork base. Certainly not as viscous and fatty as a standard ramen that you might get from Japan. I will say I really actually enjoy the broth here. That really nice light flavor is very uplifting and very refreshing. There's also a piece of shashu pork in here. Let's see how this tastes. Yeah, that's a nice piece of shashu pork right there. It's got a great meaty quality to it and a nice sweetness that's coming from the glaze. In contrast to that very light fish broth flavor, it is nice to have those bursts of accent flavors when it comes to the shashu pork. Not bad at all, I'm definitely enjoying the Simon today. Alrighty, next up we're gonna try the fettuccine alfredo with chicken. Looks like fettuccine and alfredo to me. Nice fork full here, let's give it a taste. You know what, that's not bad. The fettuccine noodles are nice and al dente. They've got a good chew to them. 
there is a decent saltiness and richness coming from that cream sauce. However, for my taste, I will say it's a tad thin. A little watery, and I definitely wish they cooked that down a little bit more. The included chicken here is actually quite nice. Nice grilled flavor there, and it is still juicy. I'd say actually overall not bad. If they would have thickened up the sauce a little bit more, this would be a really good fettuccine alfredo. And the last bite to try from this first round of entrees is gonna be the accompanying garlic bread. Looks like pretty standard garlic bread to me. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's good. Nice toast on the bread there, although it's a little toastier on one side than the other. But they've got a really great butter garlic infusion here and a soft loaf of bread here that's giving a really nice spongy texture in the center. I'm a fan, I like the garlic bread. All right, everyone, and that's the first round of entrees. We'll take a couple more bites and then pack it up to go because we've got another round of entrees coming. Don't go anywhere, I'll be right back. All right, everyone, and our next round of entrees are here, and these are all of the dinner specials. This is looking really good. Let me give you a view. Obviously, we had to go in on the juiciest prime rib in town, if that's what they advertise. We also got the short ribs as well as the butterfish. This is all looking really good. Time to give it a try. All righty, first up, trying the prime rib. I ordered this prime rib medium rare today, and it does look like it has the right color. Let's give it a try. Can you just get it for Yes. Yeah, you know what, not bad. I don't know if I could substantiate the claim that it's the juiciest prime rib in Las Vegas, but it's certainly not dry. There's a decent level of moisture here. The beef isn't tough by any means, but I wouldn't say it's the most tender cut I've ever had. There is a nice beefy flavor here, and they did get a decent amount of seasoning on that exterior. Let's get just a little bit of horseradish here, and let's see how that helps it. Oh yeah, that definitely helps. It's certainly a much milder horseradish than I'm used to, but there is still a little bit of kick there, and it does add a different dimension to that prime rib. I like that. And next up, we're gonna try the accompanying baked potato. Butter and sour cream are included here. Not bad looking, let's give it a try. You know, I'd say that's just okay. Unfortunately, the potato is still a tad hard. I wouldn't say it's undercooked, but I would certainly appreciate a little more softer of a texture. The butter and sour cream are fine here, adding just that little touch of richness. It's not bad in general. I would just say a handful of minutes off from being perfect. Now we're gonna try the accompanying broccoli. Looks like pretty standard blanched broccoli to me. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that's fine. A good blanched job here. They're cooked all the way through, but they're not ultra mushy. Not a ton of seasoning here. It's pretty much a raw broccoli flavor, but not a bad side at all for these entrees. All righty, next up, the braised short ribs. Now this was super tender. Fork went right through it very easily as I went to pick it up. Definitely excited for this one. Mm. The short rib meat here is very tender. It does fall apart in your mouth. Great beef flavor and it's really meaty. There is a sweet soy-based glaze that's been applied here. This is a very delicious sauce. Eating it alongside this gravy-soaked rice is very nice, providing a little bit of additional body and some texture play into the bite. No serious complaints for me. This is a pretty good short rib dish. All right, next up is gonna be the butterfish. Now this has a miso glaze applied to it. Let's give it a try. Oh yeah, that's very tasty. Looks certainly weren't deceiving here. The fish was ultra moist and very flaky. Beautiful texture on the fish. They did a great job on the cook. There's a nice mild buttery flavor when it comes to that fish. And it is an oily fish, not a richness there. Now I will say the sauce is a tad heavy handed. You definitely get the miso elements as well as a very nice teriyaki flavor. However, I do think it's a little in your face for my taste. If they were to dial that sauce back, maybe just a little bit, I think overall this would be very well balanced. But I am a fan of the fish in general, it is very good. All right, everyone, and that's the second round of entrees, although it is now nine o'clock, so we're gonna go ahead and put in an order for that famous oxtail soup. We're gonna take a couple more bites and get the rest to go, and for you all at home, I'm gonna make that oxtail soup appear right now. All right, everyone, and here it is, their world-famous oxtail soup. Let me go ahead and give you a view. Four gigantic pieces of oxtail in here. You can see the celery and root vegetables. A beautiful color to this broth, and it smells incredible. It also comes with a side of garlic and cilantro. I'm super excited to try this. Now, first off, I wanna just try the broth. This is looking really good. I'm so looking forward to trying this. 
Oh, that's so good. The broth is incredibly flavorful. It's nice and salty, and there's actually a bit of a woodsy note on the back end. Despite the color, it actually is a very light broth as well. But interestingly enough, while light, it is still very rich. The fat from the oxtails have beautifully rendered into the soup, just giving a ton of body to that broth. You definitely get hints of ginger as well as star anise in here. It's actually a very delicious flavor. That broth already blew me away. And of course, we gotta try the oxtail in the oxtail soup. Using my chopsticks, this just disintegrated into the form you see on my spoon. I am so pumped for this one. Oh, that is delicious. Disintegrate is an understatement. It's so incredibly soft, it truly melts in your mouth. It's able to carry a lot of those same aromatic flavors from the broth while still providing a great beefy richness that I'm really enjoying. This soup is terrific, guys. I cannot believe how good it is. It's world famous for a reason. I would wait until nine o'clock to get this for sure. All right, everyone, and that's our second round of entrees. I cannot believe how good that oxtail soup is. I'm definitely going in hard on that as we pack up the rest to go. And I think we're gonna get some desserts after that. Don't go anywhere, sweets are up next. All right, everyone, and my dessert is here, and this is looking really good. Let me go in and give you a view. Now, I opted for a hot fudge sundae today. Unfortunately, they were out of vanilla ice cream, so I got chocolate, chocolate ice cream with hot fudge. Time for some chocolate overload. Got a nice spoonful here. Let's give it a try. Yeah, that's nice. Silky and creamy. I actually love the texture of the ice cream here. It's very soft. Very chocolatey, nice cocoa flavors here. Interestingly, the fudge layer is even more chocolatey than the actual ice cream, leading to a lot of rich sweetness. I think in my heart of hearts, I would have preferred a vanilla ice cream, but I have no serious complaints. This is a good way to end the meal. All right, everybody, and that does it for my dinner here at the Market Street Cafe at the California Hotel. Now, my buddy also ended up getting an additional oxtail soup for his wife back at home, but the check without that should come out to $193 before tip today. And I must say, I really enjoyed my meal. The Korean short ribs were absolutely amazing as the appetizer. I thought the garlic shrimp was very tasty as well. The butterfish was also fairly impressive today. But really, that oxtail soup stole the show. It is so good. All things considered, I would definitely recommend this spot. A really great place to eat here in downtown Las Vegas. Now, I've certainly been enjoying exploring all of these restaurants here in downtown Las Vegas, but I make my triumphant return to the Strip next week with the opening of Peter Luger's Steakhouse at the iconic Caesars Palace. This has been my most anticipated restaurant opening all year, and I cannot wait to go and try it. Make sure that you come back next Saturday because I'm going to be showing you all the food from this legendary steakhouse. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next Saturday.